So we're giving Reiki to our past and our present and our future. And let's rub our hands together again and give some Reiki to the word and whatever this means for us, whatever comes up when we mention the word money. Money, success, wealth, our futures, our pasts. What is here for us when we hear that word money? Are we mad at people that have more money? Are we desirous of more money? What is money? Are we sad about some people not having so much money? So a backstory from me, from Monica, is I was born 1968 into um, the Catholic worker. So my mum and my dad were both uh, living in voluntary poverty. And which is, the Catholic worker is a radical Catholic sect. Uh, formed by Dorothy Day and Father Dan Berrigan. And they did not believe in hurting people. So there was this wonderful peace activism that was happening. We were giving breaky in our ways, uh, or you know, prayer as an intention is another way of saying it. Giving giving all that energy to peace, even including our energy and our well-being. And that is something that um David Miller, my dad, did is he burned his draft card as a conscientious objector and was jailed um, by the United States um, for a couple of years. So my father was born in New York. He's a New Yorker. I was born in Pennsylvania. Uh, where he was in prison at the time, in Penn State Prison. And I was baptized in that prison. Um, Joan Baez was there singing. And Father Dan Berrigan came to the prison as well with a wet handkerchief in his pocket to baptize the baby. And I was that baby. And Dan Berrigan hold, held this, this me baby up, up in two hands, this squiggling little baby above his head. I baptized this child. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Used that hanky of wet holy water to baptize me. And Joan Baez sang. So here we are in this, in this Catholic worker, in this ideal of um, character. You know, in the tri in the my father's trial, they conceded character. So meaning that um, nobody can, we're, we're, we're allowing that you have the best character, we understand that, and we're still going to put you in jail for what you did, for refusing to go to war and killing and fighting, fighting and killing. So that's, what, that's where my dad put his energy, and there was a type of sacrifice that happened there because his mental health suffered as uh, it's completely understandable no wonder it's pretty hard to be put in solitary confinement and um threatened rape and threatened you know or you know we don't know what happened and um my and dad is uh, just this incredible person with this superpower of strong, steady presence. So that strong, steady presence said, no, I will not fight, I will not kill. And that was the legacy that we are past, you know, my sisters and I, and my children, and all of our uh, future our future ancestors, the ancestors from before, the ancestors from now, the ancestors uh, into the future. We're, we're, we're in, this, in this energy field. And one of the things I would like to change for myself is bringing energy through this body and allowing myself to have the wealth that feels um, 
that has a type of security that has security that comes with it like wanting to feel that security that safety is feeling the emotional safety is a pretty great start and that's something that my father offers me um and my sister Juliana um, who we practice magic together on a regular basis because our Catholic workerness switched uh, switch gears a little bit in San Francisco when the family became more pagan. We 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 met Starhawk. Uh, my father married Starhawk, uh, who wrote a lot of books on feminist religion and Wicca. And that feminism was really there with both of my stepmothers and my father is a male feminist as well. And that that feminism is there. And yet feminism has a troubled past. So that troubled past includes witch burnings, you know, witches, especially now if we're going to reclaim matri the matriarchal religion or feminist religion or um, the feminine principle, the earth mother, you know, really it's based around earth mother and understanding the, the sacred life that pours through all of the, the elements and earth and us. So this, this sacred, this fifth sacred thing as Starhawk's uh, most popular book is called, this fifth, fifth sacred thing of magic and spirit and love is what makes the world go round, is what moves that cosmic donut, it's that energy of love and movement, which also includes sexuality, which also includes money, which also includes lo just loving our neighbor as ourselves. So bringing all of the, bringing Jesus, calling, calling in all Mary and Joseph and God and uh, Allah and bringing in all of the deities, all of the fairies and the contemble and the light language creatures, you know, like every, all of, all of energy, everything is everything. Mary J. Blige song, everything is everything. Everything is everything. I read a book by a Sufi mask, master um, called The Unity of Religious Ideals. And that book showed me what I was suspecting to be true <laughs> which was that hmm, that's that's interesting like this Catholicism you know matches up with this matches up with that matches up with um all of like the the basic understandings of love thy neighbor as thyself love God um share sharing you know like all of these qualities that we understand to be good and wonderful really go through all all of the religions and certainly goes through paganism and witchcraft and um earth religions so here here we are with um moving moving energy with breath so moving energy with breath moving that stuck energy with breath breathing breathing deeply and getting all of that air and pausing in time time pausing time and space so what is magic what is money magic what is sex magic what is that what is the magic that I can make for myself that helps myself feel more at home in my body, more at home on planet Earth? So rubbing our hands together and giving Reiki to our present and our right now present one hand on our on our belly one hand the giving hand on my belly the receiving hand my left hand to the universe so receiving energy from all that is giving it back to my belly 
can do this when you get yelled at by your boss. Get yourself some extra energy back from the universe and give it to yourself. Give it to your hara. Give it to your just above your belly button around that area. Like, okay, sweetie, you're okay. I got you. Take a moment to appreciate what we have. Grounding our feet to the earth. Feeling our feet, feeling our skin of our feet. Our socks and our shoes on the floor, in the room, and on planet earth. And now reversing our hands and putting our left hand on our bellies, right above our belly button and our right hand towards the universe, giving back all this great energy that we've collected, giving magic, giving Reiki to our future. Rubbing our hands together and clearing, clearing any of the energies that we don't want from around our bodies and recycling it back to the earth. Blessed be. So all of this time that I've been practicing, focusing, when I first started getting into inner relationship focusing a couple of years ago, it took about a year and of being using this technique to listen to myself and become less afraid of what I was going to find inside. What I might find is traumatic memories, memories of trauma. And I did. And I, in a, I gave compassion and empathy to the, that little one inside that felt the way that it did, that felt so scared and confused and angry. And as I gave energy to that little one, gave compassion whenever she's there, I found I was able to do more The more you love yourself, the more you can do in the world. And that's uh, more functional. So sounds really simple, and it is. And I do highly recommend learning focusing, learning inner relationship focusing. It's an incredible method developed by, started by, Gene Gendlin, the philosopher. So you can look him up, G-E-N-E, Gendlin, G-E-N-D-L-I-N, the philosopher. Great books. Read the presence. Um, read all about his philosophy and watch the videos, actually. Watch him give focusing sessions, listening to people. He's a therapist and a focuser. And other people took that work he gave the work freely and the focusing institute the focusing institute was started um i believe by by him by his wife mary and also other incredible focusers who wanted to give this method to the world and it's actually pretty big you know the the focusing community is pretty big community you can find focusing partners and practice this wonderful method and feel a lot better you feel heard your life is going to change I promise you it is that simple and so of course I also teach focusing and in a relationship focusing I teach it um to groups and individuals. I love to give private sessions. And my certification that I did with Anne Weiser Cornell and also my with my mentor, Lee Miller, and 
lots of incredible focusing teachers, Lynn Preston giving her a lot of credit and all of my focusing partners and the group that I went through the focusing training with, Kelly Christine Case and Lizzie and Karen, and I'll put those, I put there, I'll put their names and contact information on my website, Monica Miller Coaching. So you can get private sessions with them. And Lizzie is teaching also um, focusing with or plans to teach mixed focusing with 12 step and Kelly. And I know she has lots of other um, plans for teaching. And Karen is the most incredible one on one session giver. She also does cranial sacral work. And Kelly also is younger and has she was an ex Mormon and so has this incredible background of spirituality that she brings to focusing and does grief tending workshops and all other kinds of things. And Monica, I myself teach mixing everything that comes from my background, like the magic from that I learned from Starhawk, who uh, my stepmother, and also clown, also te uh, learning uh, play these playful techniques of clown from Jan Henderson, you can look her up, Jan Henderson Full Moon Productions. So I did the Extreme Joey workshop with Jan and met my clown friends, my wonderful clown friends, and also learning clown from Christine Lewis in San Francisco. So bringing clown, bringing the discipline of clown into what I do helps to bring a playful edge to focusing and inner relationship focusing because I know a lot of what you might find in there might be quite uncomfortable inside you know it's it's not a shock to know that doing inner work is not for sissies you know there are difficult things that we went through that we don't want to feel we don't want to touch we don't want to remember and yet those are the keys to our freedom. Those are the keys to our functionality in relationship and in work and in play. It's the, it's the keys to freedom. It's the, your freedom keys. <laughs> I promise you that. And doing that work, it's well worth it. So cl what clown does is it brings a playful edge to it. It brings, it brings play into it so that the the clown has that safety net of humor when things get tough and marcel marceau can teach you about that yes you watch that marcel marceau movie the clown got those children from uh the from the nazis and saved their lives so he took them and over the hills into switzerland and Oh, I should say mountains, and that's a pretty, pretty important situation there. So, clown save, saves lives, and clowns, a clown has saved my life. You know, when I was starting focusing training, one of the things that kept coming up for me was how when all these difficult emotions came up, especially like in Lynn Preston's class, focusing across differences, those differences were really painful. You know, it's like the, the differences that we feel, the othering that happens because like, oh, I'm, I'm feeling othered because I'm, I'm Jewish or I'm feeling othered because I'm, um, a non-vaccine person, I'm a Trump voter, I'm a this, I'm a that, you know, everybody had their own imas, and those I'm a, I'm a, I'm a this, I'm a that, 
gets really scary when someone else says, well, I'm a this. What do you do? Well, I'm a Palestinian. Well, I'm a this. I'm a, um, an immigrant. My job was just lost by we had to leave the country because because this law just came down the pike and we worked all our lives to be able to come here and have this job and those differences are 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 very interesting once you get really being with each other and communicating across those differences which includes all the pain that comes up um like uh having to listen to people whose lives are totally affected by the person that you voted for and what difference does that make to you does it touch you in a deeper way does it change you does it change me it changed me when I realized you know that the anger that I had towards someone who voted for Trump was completely you know it's like the misunderstood that person was misunderstood I was misunderstanding them as stupid or evil or you know what you know if I if my angry mother inside my part of me my defender my protectors would only just tell him well this well that and the other and change his mind and that didn't work out too well you know like slinging stones and such doesn't doesn't work out that well and what does work out well is if you listen and you stop and you try to find out like, well, what, what is going on for you? Oh, I see you come from this background of war, the war child who was left behind and the father went to work and you're the parentified child. You had to take care of the mother. It's very scary. You know, you're only 10 years old and it, you're terrified out of your mind. And, you know, this little boy, you, you know, has those protectionist kind of views, like got to keep the steel work in the country. We can't get the work from other people can't come in and take our jobs. And like that, that type of, of terror of survival that that 10 year old felt, you know, not the 76 year old, but the 10 year old. And the 76 year old still feels, you know, that trauma is still there, still alive inside that person. And the defenders and the protectors do what they need to do. So that child, well, that person doesn't have to feel terrified. That's why we behave the ways we do, my dears, my dears, my dears, my dears. This is why we behave the way we do. And now my grandmother, now I'm channeling my English grandmother and she was so um such a lovely person as she would put her hand on on my hand and say there there darling there 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 darling and that kindness and that empathy is what we need to give to ourselves when we feel scared there there darling and breathe and find more space when we feel triggered. And see, ah, oh, there are other points of view here. Yes, ah, oh, I see, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see, they're not actually trying to hurt me. They're just trying to feel, feel safe for themselves. Oh, that's how it is for them. And when you find that out, then you realize that throwing stones doesn't um, only makes things worse and that 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 can be turned around on you. You can become the bad guy. You're the bad guy who believes in abortion or believes in this or believes in that. And you're having stones thrown at you. And, you know, what happened in learning focusing, we're learning to 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 communicate across differences is we had differences that we did not know, even know that we had. Um, like my clown has its way of defending itself, you know, when it, when it finds itself in circumstances that it doesn't feel completely comfortable. So, you know, my silliness and my, you know, resulted in my clown 
uh, behaving in a silly way, in a jokey way that great, grossly offended somebody in the group. And um, they were a, a come came from, I guess, some kind of uh, religious background in the South. Um, and they had been a preacher and she uh, told told me that I was a terror, you know, in one way or another implied that I was really, really terrible for being myself. And that really affected me. You know, she used the word sacrilegious even and and that word um, touched this is, this is how complex it is. This is the point, right, I'm trying to make, is that we are so complex that someone says something or has a reaction to us that then makes us have a reaction. And we don't even know where those things are coming from until we really focus on it. But because I was doing focusing at that point, I was able to find out that, oh, I feel so scared and terrified because she used the word sacrilegious that touches something in me from my Catholic schoolgirl past. And I'm remembering that God won't, God only loves you if you're this or that, you know, and doesn't love you if you're that or this. And I felt, you know, terrified. The fear of God was, was put in me. She did put the fear of God in me. And that fear of God was going to hell because I had been clowny and silly in class and that silly clowny person um, then bounces back onto her. And, you know, she, she's then, you know, we all knew each other somewhat well. And we knew that this person in this part of her who had been clowny in her past, wasn't even allowed to be the valedictorian because she was too naughty and wasn't allowed to, you know, was was punished for being a child that was rambunctious, crawling under the pews at church. And all these naughty things that she did um, were, um, you know, I don't know how her parents dealt with it, but the way she expressed it was, I knew I was bad. I knew I was bad. And that she would say that. And she thought, you know, she knew she had suffered and been punished in one way or another, like certainly that example of not being the valedictorian at school. Um, but she accepted it because she knew she was bad. And here was I being a rambunctious clown and not understanding that I was bad you know I was like uh, not really I'm a pagan and maybe there's a difference we have here but I was pagan and I was Catholic so that complexity that inner relationship that inner democracy you know where the parts of myself inside were like I'm Catholic well I'm pagan well I'm a witch well I'm a clown well I'm a baker and I'm blue collar and these people are assholes and blah, 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 and you know but I want to be like them you know so all of this was going on inside me all of these things all of the nuances the whole of us the whole of all our parts and here we were trying to communicate across differences and the point was we would go down inside and under and say wow, okay, I get it now. I get it that my um, being clowny and flipping the bird at my teacher in class, um, which she thought was funny because she's a New Yorker and they're New Yorkers and street talk. And then half of the class was like, ah, it's just street talk. Don't be silly. Don't make a thing. What? Like, well, how is that a thing? It's not a thing. And and then others were like, oh, real harm has been done. And you crossed the line now, girl, you've crossed the line. And oh, no, that's like really terrible. Oh, no. You know, so like you take something really simple, like a hand gesture and find out that we have differences and those differences can be so extreme. Like um, the one the woman from the south who had been punished so incredibly 
much for being rambunctious and being uh, her boisterous self being clowny basically that you know I was getting the scarlet letter put on me and branded and kind of the witch hunt was going on and the lynching or the mobbing you know and that the mobbing that was happening was no different than the mobbing that was happening in the country you know we were in there talking about January 6th and the mobbing that happened and whatever mobbing was happening on all sides you know it's like this these polarities that were happening and people really just if they could pause and stop and go inside it's like really all I really want all I really want is to feel safe and of course, my clown now would like to bring in a song that I know quite well from um, Pygmalion. When Liza Doolittle, she sings, All I want is a room somewhere Far away from the cold night air With one enormous chair Oh, wouldn't it be lovely Lots of chocolates for me to eat Da 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 la 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 oh don't it be lovely 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 so yes that's what we want we want to feel lovely we want to feel safe and that's what we're reaching towards in misguided ways because our split off parts of ourselves our parts are the ones that are doing the work, these defenders. Like, if I can't have my guns, I will feel unsafe. So I better go to, you know, Washington. I better go to the Capitol and fight because otherwise I won't feel safe. And then other people feel exactly the opposite way. I won't feel safe if I, uh, if I, if there are guns. So I need to get that, those, um, laws passed so my children are not being murdered in schools you know I, I lived on Martha's Vineyard as I've said several times for 22 years and so many people come there from Connecticut they have houses there and they'll come on vacations or we might even live there now you know a lot of people move there from uh, from other places when during the pandemic but also people just have summer houses there and one of the families um, lost a child in um, in the, that little Connecticut school shooting, and you know, so knowing 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 the heartbreak, being close to heartbreak, what what would you think that we would want? We would want to not have guns. We would want to not have that. <laughs> it seems pretty reasonable, but then you've you've got those other views on the other side that think that if any law is passed to restrict guns then their guns will be taken away and they're very afraid of that so communicating across differences how do we do it how can we be compassionate to the parts of ourselves and help help those parts to be really really listened to and sympathized with uh, empathized with and maybe we can also find space to listen to others and to allow and to bring in other parts of the self and others. Maybe, maybe our views can change. Maybe compromises can be made. Maybe we can move forward. Maybe we can understand. So here's another moment where we can give Reiki to ourselves and to our futures and to each other, rubbing our hands together, giving it to ourselves, rubbing our hands together it to others, putting our hands together, giving it to all of our futures. Blessed be all of our ancestors, our whole family, including all of us, all the ones we disagree with, all the ones who disagree with us. We are here together on planet Earth, learning how to share. Blessed be.